Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 242 of the Spearhead Sunday's podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. I'm looking very nice in my Death Threats Don't Scare Me hoodie. Restock coming soon to celebrate the, th- the third anniversary or maybe the fourth current member of the special. I don't know when it happened. The point is, buy my shit. Uh, also, uh, speaking of purchasing things, my tour is going on sale uh, on Tuesday. The pre-sale is happening uh, Friday or is currently happening if you listen to this on a Sunday. Uh, so get your tickets now at lewispears.com. Check your emails if you're on the gig list. Um, and uh, otherwise, general sale goes on sale uh, at like 5.30 p.m. Tuesday. It's going to be sick. I'm going absolutely everywhere except for Melbourne because I've already done there. Going to be sick. See you there. Now, it's time to talk about something I feel very passionate about. Uh, it's time to really stand up against some members of society that I think are leeches, that contribute nothing, and are also liars. And uh, I think uh, what I'm about to say might be might might be something that everyone listening agrees with, and that's good. It's time to address the the terrible members of society that contribute nothing, and that is paramedics. Okay. Oh. We saved lives. Cool, bro. You saved a guy who broke his neck because he tried to do a double backflip off a bridge that was two feet high. He doesn't need saving. Hang up the phone, all right? Paramedics. Now, initially, I was very pro-paramedic, like most of us. Oh, they're in an ambulance. They have cool uniforms. They save lives. All objectively cool things, right? (laughs) You know, no, I've never looked at an ambulance and gone, boring, lame, get a real car, dork, right? <laughs> Paramedics, my perception of them have changed purely because of this one thing that it, I experience every single morning. And the first time it happened, I didn't care. The second time it didn't happen, I didn't care. I've been living here for about a year now and I've just started to really go, you know what? Fuck all paramedics, okay? So... I go to my cafe every morning. Every morning, nice and early, go to my cafe before work, all right? I'm going to work after the cafe. And I go and I get my coffee. And uh, what happens is, because I live near a lot of hospitals, a lot of paramedics go to this cafe in uniform. They jump out of the ambulance and they go and they line up and they get their coffee, all right? Just like every normal human being, no problem with that. Sometimes you've got to be caffeinated. My issue is this. The paramedics always get their coffee before me, even though even sometimes they've come in 10 minutes after I've ordered. There's six people behind me in the line. They get their coffee. Now, I hear you guys. Oh, they're paramedics. They they don't have time to line up. They're saving lives. Okay, right? That's what I thought initially. That's what I've been thinking. I'm like, oh, I, I, I even thought this is great. The cafe is doing a service for all of our first responders. Everyone say thanks to our first responders. They respond first. No. You know who the real first responders are? All those cunts in the YouTube comments. First. <laughs> those are the real first responders, if we're being honest. There's written evidence of them responding first. <laughs> I mean, yes, they're not always first. Sometimes there'll be 10 comments and one of them goes first and he's not hes not first, but he did respond with first, so he is a first responders. So I would like to say thank you very much to all of my first responders down there in the comment section. Even if you're unemployed, you are a hero. Good on you. And you deserve recognition, which is obviously what you genuinely crave, you fucking loser. Now, on to the people that are even bigger losers than you, paramedics. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a doctorate's degree. I help people stay alive in times of crisis. Help me. My mother's dad. Boring. I tell dick jokes. Much more important. Okay? So, cafe, even if they've been six people behind me in the line, they get their coffee first. Initially, I'm like, oh, dude, this is amazing. The cafe is helping out first responders. That's awesome. They don't have time to line up. And then I started thinking, fuck, These paramedics don't seem like they're in a hurry at all, you know? Like, you ever look at a paramedic on lunch break and you think, back to work, and and then you go, no, no, no. If they didn't have a break, more people would die because they'd be really tired. So I'm like, all right, well, they're... You know, they can they can do whatever they want on their lunch break. And then I was like, well, hang on a second. this It's not lunchtime, it's breakfast time. And then I started hearing conversations of the paramedics. They're talking about getting to work. They haven't started their fucking shift yet. 
They're not... Why do they get served before me if they haven't started their fucking shift? If they're on shift, yes, you get coffee before me. You're not even at work, cunt. You're just wearing the uniform. Doesn't make any sense. Don't push in front of me just because you are late to work. I don't like that at all. I think it should be an honesty policy with the first responders and they need to line up and say, I'm working or I haven't started working yet. And then you get your coffee before me. I'm going to start asking asking paramedics have you started yet are you rostered on if they say no i'm gonna take their coffee and drink it that should have been mine Ugh, a hot chocolate whatever i'll drink it anyway because that's an unfair system oh paramedics first responders COVID. We need to protect them. No, they're liars. They're taking advantage of a system that was set up to benefit people who are on shift and i won't stand for it <laughs> And I know, you, I know you might be thinking, oh, this is an overreaction. Well, guess what I saw today? I saw two paramedics jump out of the ambulance and I went, whoa, here we go. A couple of guys bludging, pretending to be at work. Who are they? Keelan? <laughs> pretending to be busy, doing fuck all. Oh, I need a coffee. Quick, got to skip the line. <laughs> There were four people in front of me. I'm thinking, oh, this is great. I'll get my coffee in no time. Fucking six paramedics rock up. I'm waiting in line for half an hour. Right? Anyway, they're waiting for their coffee, which they're going to get in two minutes because it's such an emergency for them to arrive, you know, half an hour before their shift even starts so they can sit in the break room and finish their coffee, right? They're squatting down on the ground. Then this cute little boy runs up to the two paramedics and he goes, oh, you guys are so cool. I love your walkie talkies. Those are so cool. And the paramedic goes, oh, well, mate, guess what? You can have it. And the boy goes, oh, my God, really? And he goes, yep. And the boy takes it and runs off and shows his parent. And then the other paramedic guy goes, what the fuck did you do that for? Why did you give him the walkie-talkie? And he's like, oh, I didn't think he'd run away with it. And the guy's like, well, you gave it to him. And he goes, oh, yeah, shit. He goes, he can't have that. That's like medical equipment. He, he's a toddler. <laughs> you know, that, that, that little toddler is going to be like, oh, look, mommy, look, daddy, I've got a walkie-talkie. And then they'll be like, uh, there's been a mass shooting around the corner and he's going to have to respond. There was a little, <laughs> little four-year-old. Applying fucking pressure to bu to gunshot wounds. We're in Frankston. <laughs> you know, you'll have to come and put all ten fingers on a bunch of different needle holes on some ice addict. Because he's got the walkie-talkie. He's, 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 you know, being called in. You want to give that responsibility to a toddler, you monster? Anyway, so the toddlers run off to the parents. And he's like, oh, look, this is so cool. And the parents are like, oh, my God, what a beautiful moment for my son. He's like, you guys are heroes. You guys, I want to be a paramedic when I grow up. And then, and then he runs off and he's standing somewhere else. He can't hear them. The paramedics are like, you can't give a fucking child the walkie-talkie. Do you have a backup one? He goes, no, that's my only walkie-talkie. What the fuck do you do that for? And I'm like, well, now they're going to be late for work. <laughs> and uh, then... I watched the paramedic go, hey, mate, come over here, and takes the walkie-talkie back from the toddler who then starts to cry. <laughs> Just going from the, the kid's best day of his life to the worst day ever. They took my walkie-talkie and now, some, now someone's going to die because I couldn't respond. So let that be a lesson. Right, And then his mum was like from Brisbane and she started yelling at the paramedics about masks for some reason. It was sweet. You know, I reckon if I, if I spent like fucking $1,500 a month pumping up my lips, I wouldn't want to wear a mask either. I want everyone to see that, look, I've spent heaps to look like a fucking duck. So anyway, guys, paramedics should be abolished. Defund the paramedics. That's what I think. No, no, they're doing a good job. But I, but I do, st I do stand by my anno I'm not, I'm. It's annoying because they haven't started work yet. Is that? Am I, am I wrong? Am I being an asshole? They haven't started their shift yet. Why do they get to skip the line? You're not saving any lives. You're not like the only in the, the only scenario that would benefit someone would be if they're consistent. If they're late, they're running late. That's all I'm saying. If you're on shift, you can skip the line. No worries. You deserve it. If you haven't started work yet, hey, man, leave five minutes earlier like the rest of us.
I don't let Keelan get coffee. He's never been late. I just, I just like restricting him when he comes here. And no, no caffeine, mate. Am I being an asshole? They can't skip the line. They haven't started. Uh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I wouldn't ever say anything about it. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. See that? You know what? I bet I'm going to have a lot of people silently nodding their heads here. Is you know what, Lewis? Technically, you're correct, but it's not worth the battle. <laughs> you know, it's one of those ones where it's like it's not worth the battle. It's like if you saw like a like a, like an amputee skip the line, and you're like, well, he's not retarded. No, I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> So, anyway, guys, in uh, some more lighthearted news, Bill Cosby's out of prison. <laughs> Bill Cosby's out. Free my man, Bill. Uh, dude, it is fucking crazy. I've, every time I read about the Bill Cosby case, it's fucked, all right? He definitely did that shit. Absolutely. Fuck him. He shouldn't be released from prison. But the the story around it is so fucking confusing, and, and he is he's just losing it. You ever see? Have you ever seen that footage of Bill Cosby when he's walking out of the court ha- courthouse after like his 115th trial or whatever? Like he's 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 lost. He's gone. Yeah, you definitely raped like dozens of women. And he comes out and he's be- he's he's in handcuffs with pol- with police are leading him out, putting him into like a limo or a car or something. And there's press fucking everywhere. And he just goes, Hey hey hey. Hey, hey, hey! That's great. I love that. You know, like it doesn't doesn't matter what. Like he was like, man, I might have lost the case. I may be a serial rapist, but you know what's gonna get him? Fat Albert. <laughs> that like that's what he thought. Like, man, if I could just bust out a hey, 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 everyone's gonna go. You know what? I reckon Bill's all right. I reckon we let him go. We'll just watch our drinks in future. You know. So he's been released from prison, and 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 like he's been basically acquitted. Right? From my understanding is. Uh, He's been acquitted because the first time uh, he got in trouble, basically, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing in a moron, so, you know, take this with, with a ton of salt. Um, <laughs> basically, the prosecutors were like, look, if you just tell us what happened, you won't get in trouble. And then he was like, oh, I won't get in trouble? And, he just, and they go, no, you won't. If you tell us exactly what happened... You won't get in trouble. And he's like, oh, yeah, raped them all. Raped heaps. Heaps of chicks. Raped them all. I did it with a hypnol. I did the Fat Albert impression while they were under. It was great. And then the, then the prosecutors were like, I gotcha. He was like, what? And then, it, and then he went to prison. And then fucking years later, he was like, hey, you guys told me I wouldn't get in trouble. And then lawyers looked at it and were like, oh, shit. Yeah, they did say that. And so now he's free. And it's the prosecutor's error because they did... Say, in writing, if you tell us what happens, you won't get in trouble. So he said what happens, and then he went to prison for it, but then they found this, and now they're letting him out because they did say that he was, you know, they were he was lied to. So, like, on paper, yeah, he, sh- he should get out. But, like, morally, it's like, oh, fuck, well, he definitely did that stuff. He's just out on a technicality. He's basically acquitted of rape because of an admin error. Oops. Shit. Like, that's how the dude got off. How lucky for him and how unlucky for everyone who enjoys, you know, not putting their hand over their drink everywhere. That's crazy. Uh, I was reading about the case and um, <laughs> he was he was offered the chance to... Uh, Keelan told me this. He was offered the chance to, like, get out early if he went to therapy for perpetrators. Is that right? Mm. So they said, look, either you're going to do 10 years prison or you can go to this special type of therapy for perpetrators of crimes. What was it? Bill Cosby denied parole after refusing to do therapy for sexual predators. Yes. So they're like, look, you can get out on parole 
uh, but you have to do therapy for sexual predators. And instead, he decided to go to prison, which basically him going, look, I am so confident that I did not rape anyone. And to prove it, I will go to prison for rape. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. What a king. How old is he now? He's going to fucking 83. 83. Dude, I wouldn't want to be out of prison now. COVID's going to get him. Absolutely. That shit's crazy. Um, so, so what happens now? He's just free. Because in America, they have a law, which is, I suppose, a good law where you can't be tried twice for the same crime. Um, double jeopardy. So, you, can, you know, if you get proven innocent or guilty, they can't fucking charge you with the same crime again. It's a, it's a good law. But I suppose in, in scenarios like this where he gets off on an admin error because a prosecutor probably said something you shouldn't have, it's like, oh, well, fuck. Now we have basically a confession uh, and a conviction, but he just gets to be free. It's, I don't know, it's really, it seems really weird. Like, it seems like someone's going to be getting fired over that. It seems like he's just free to do whatever he wants now. Yeah, he's, a, he's like, you know, effectively in the, lies, in the eyes of the law, an innocent man. And, you know, as long as he doesn't push in front of me at the, the, the cafe, I don't necessarily have a problem with it. <laughs> that sucks. I feel sorry for the, all the fucking women because he did some terrible stuff. Anyway, he'll be dead soon. Hey, hey, hey. Um, right. Another thing that's very important, very, very important, is my tour is going on sale soon. And I thought, you know, I thought looking at the news when literally half the country is going into lockdown, you know, Sydney, 130 cases, Adelaide going into lockdown, Northern Territory closed their borders into lockdown. Alice Springs. Alice Springs, lockdown. Gold Coast, lockdown, Newcastle, lockdown, everywhere in the country other than Melbourne and Tassie, lockdown. I thought, what better time to announce my tour? Guys, Back in the Trenches is going across the country. It's going everywhere, just like COVID. No, I, I, my hope is, not the best advertisement for a tour, but my hope is it's not until August and September. So looking at all the other flare-ups of COVID, it does seem like everyone can get it under control in a month. We've got a month now to fix COVID. In some states, you've got two months. Sydney's not till September. They're fucked at the moment. Hopefully by then, you know, it won't be. So they're on sale now. Get your tickets. Uh, they're all, you know, limited capacity because they are COVID safe shows. So grab them. Uh, and of course, if they, if, if it does get affected by COVID, we will reschedule the shows uh, and we'll refund anyone who's affected by it. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, so we're not going to be spending any of that money until the shows are complete. Uh, and uh, yeah, if anything happens because of COVID, uh, it's absolutely refund. So, you know, uh, Money back guarantee. Get your tickets now. Loosebeers.com. Um, they'll be on general sale Tuesday. They'll be on public sale, uh, pre-sale right now. So if you're on the gig list, check your emails and yeah, they're there. Um, what else has been bloody happening? We've been we've been pumping through stand-up clips. Uh, we've been really, really smashing and I've got this whole like workflow going working with a couple of editors at the moment and uh yeah it's it's going great we're going to start pumping out clips i'm going to bring back real talk i'm uh doing pretty good on youtube at the moment it's uh it's all bloody happening uh and it's all thanks to grand theft auto being delayed until 2025 is the latest news they're gonna they're going look apparently people who have leaked information about Grand Theft Auto in the past and have had a pretty good track record with being correct are going, yeah, the new one, Grand Theft Auto 6, it's not coming back, it's not coming out until 2025. I, which I kind of agree with. I mean, I've been playing through Grand Theft Auto 5 uh, and I, I previously have, I've never finished it. I've just started playing it like this year properly. And uh, it's a, still an incredible game. I still see shit in the game that makes me go, man, what the fuck? So, like, to top it, I mean, you're going to have to feel the hooker's blowjob in real time, in real life. So technology needs to get better for that to happen, you know? Because at the moment, you can jump in a car with a hooker and the, and the car will bounce. And there'll be a few voice lines of her going, oh, yeah. And then she'll get from the passenger seat on top of you. That's pretty good. That didn't happen in Grand Theft Auto 4. You would just sit in opposite seats and you could tell nothing was happening. Now they have an animation going on in the car. 
the only way to get better than that is to have a VR gape scene. And to, to be able to do that, we need better technology. So I think that's why GTA 5, 6 isn't coming till 2025. Three years from now. Wait, four years from now. When the fuck is it? 2021? Four years from now. Four years from now. 12 years after GTA 5 is released. 12 years after GTA 5. That is a big fucking gap. That's, you know what? You know what that is, Keelan? That's a gape in gap, you know? And I think that's what they're getting the technology to do. But it may, look, it makes sense, like... I would say the only game that's tried to, to top Grand Theft Auto s since GTA 5 came out was Cyberpunk. And look what happened when they released a game that they, that they were not ready to release, you know? I feel like a game like that, like, you know, it's like the next fucking Skyrim or the next Fallout. Like, what the fuck is that going to be? Like... The, the, from Fallout 4 to Fallout 76 or whatever the fuck they called it, people didn't like the new one because it wasn't like, it didn't blow your mind. Like those types of giant open world games in established franchises that basically invented what the genre is, they need to make people go, what the fuck? You know, and I feel like I guess the technology probably isn't isn't there yet. Like they, to me, that doesn't seem like that much of a big leap from the previous generation of consoles to the current ones. It really, like, I'm not seeing that much of a difference in what they can do. Like, the graphics look better, I guess, but it's, I don't know. I feel like it, and you know what I want to see in Grand Theft Auto? I want to see, like, you can go into every fucking building. Like, every single building you can go into. You can't do that. That's the only thing I truly think that could make me lose my mind would be if every fucking building had a purpose and like opening hours and even if you couldn't necessarily interact with them, like how cool would it be just walking down the street and you see a clothing store, you see people buying food, you see people doing this and that. That's kind of the only thing I've, I think that the current one doesn't really do. Like you can even go fucking underwater and be in, in a submarine, you can fly around. They really haven't really, they just haven't done space. It's kind of the only thing that you can't do in GTA 5 that would make people go, oh, fuck, that's different, you know? Like, it, it's such a big, massive game. I feel like the only thing they've never done before is, yeah, like an, a world that has stores. And that's not and that's that doesn't make the game much better. That just makes you go, oh, wow, there's stores and every fucking building you can go into and open. Like, imagine if you could fucking break into a home, like any home, you could just kick down the door and there'd be like a family there or there'd be, or, or maybe it would be empty or sometimes it would be, it'd be like a drug den or whatever the fuck. Like, imagine if you could kick down any door in the game and there would be something going on there. You could bust into an office, alarms go off, police show up. I don't know. That's kind of the only thing that I could think of that would make the game that much impressive and that much more impressive from like a after you finish the story point other than other than that it's you know why would you make a new one if you couldn't completely blow people's mind because even the graphics like they don't need to get that much better like really like you look at gta 4 and that was good and then gta 5 was like incredible and then it's like, what else do you, like, how much more real do you want this shit to look before it starts, before you start feeling guilty for killing shit? You're like, oh, that's an actual person. Fuck. <laughs> it's like that mission, the torture mission. Mm. Yeah, that mission where you, like, torture someone and it was, like, it was real methods of torture. And it was, like, you know, it was, there, it was, some, there was some satire to it where it's, like, the CIA definitely does this. And that was, like, kind of the point of the mission. The FBI, sorry. They do that shit. Uh, and that was, like, the statement they were making. And it was a little bit funny that you were, you were torturing a guy and getting absolutely zero information every time. And he gave you all of the answers and torturing him more did absolutely nothing to help you. But you did it anyway. Like, I get the point. But I was, like, man, this is, like, I didn't like doing it. Which maybe also is a cool thing about the game was like, I was like, oh, fuck, I'm doing things I don't really like doing. That's, oh, this is like a moral dilemma. I felt that as a human, even though I was playing a game. But, uh, it, yeah, I don't know. How much more real do you really want the shit to get? You play on PC. Yeah. So you don't have like a controller 
on the PlayStation and Xbox version, the, co the controller vibrates when you're torturing the guy. Yeah. Which makes a difference. Yeah, the, vibrate, the vibrating with torture scene. I don't know about that. That's a lot. That is a lot. Um, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to, I mean, fucking comment below. What do you think they're going to do with it? Like what, if you're a real Grand Theft Auto nut, what do you want that it doesn't have now? Like if I were a games developer, I would have no fucking clue how to make that better. Like you can make it bigger and you can make it look more realistic, but that doesn't mean a better game. Like how do you, how do you actually innovate on top of what's already there in GTA V, uh, other than, you know, bullshit like removing microtransactions, like we know that's not going to happen. The leak, the guy who leaked it said that it's most likely going to be a, a Fortnite kind of thing where every season there's a new update. So you might get mm. like a base game and then in three months it might, you know, a new island of mine. You know what? That actually would be really cool because I think that, that maybe the problem with I think that what they'll be doing is they'll be trying to make like a living breathing world that evolves I guess that you know what that is probably the only way you could do it where in the same sense where where the Fortnite map will change and the Warzone map will change I guess you do that with Grand Theft Auto and you unlock new areas or maybe there's a giant terrorist attack and it blows up a part of the city that would be really fucking cool I guess you know what it's like a, I think that maybe the only way to innovate it is like what World of Warcraft does where it's like every few years there's a new zone and the progression opens up and gets further and the story progresses maybe that's what grand theft auto does you create your own character and it just becomes basically an mmo which is kind of what it is already where there's you know there's money and you can build businesses and you can collect cars and shit like that i guess instead of building a single player game that has multiplayer and expanding on that, you create just a living, breathing multiplayer world that has single player. I guess if you look at it like that, then maybe it could blow up. Because it would be cool to like, you know, Grand Theft Auto, maybe it starts in Liberty City or whatever, and then you can go to Vice City uh, or you can go to San Andreas. You can go here, go there. I think that would be cool. Um, what else would be cool is like, a perfectly shaven cock and balls. And you can get that with manscaped.com by using code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. Shave your balls. Ladies, shave your bum. Shave your pussy. Shave your chin, fellas. I use it down here on my neck. Don't use it on my chin. I use it on my neck. Really works great. Haven't done it for a while. You can tell. I shave my nuts. I shave my, my air, I shave my nipples and my chest. I shave my neck, I shave my back, I shave my pussy and my crack. With manscaped.com, use code SPEARS, the best pube ball bag shaver in the game. I use it all the time and it's really great stuff and you get 20% off and free shipping by using code SPEARS. Support the brands that support the show. You'll probably notice a nice new camera. Guess how we paid for it? That's right, money. Where does that come from? Brands. What can you give to brands? Your money. What will they give to me? Their money. It all fucking spins. Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS. Now that we've got that out of the way, it is time for the miscellaneous bit at the end of the podcast. Now, I haven't done this for a few weeks now because I have not had enough emails. Uh, if you want to send an email to the show, if you need some life advice, if you have a question, if you uh, want to tell me a story, send it through to podcast at loosespears.com. We have some juicy questions here. we got some great ones. First up, we've got this. Summarize it in the subject line, just like this gentleman has. Girlfriend cheated on me days before we were going into an open relationship. Juicy stuff. This is juicy. Similar to whoever she cheated on you with, I'm going to enjoy this juice. <laughs> That's disgusting. I'm sorry. Hey, Lewis. My name is Edmund. Dude, I knew an old lady that had a dog called Edmund. My, my old neighbor, she had a dog called Edmund, and she was super English, and, she, and I always hear her yelling at the dog, Oh, Edmund! Edmund, Edmund shit, Edmund, oh, Edmund. Um, so good on you. <laughs> hey, Lewis, my name's Edmund. Uh, Edmund, I'm going to say it that, I'm going to say it like that. 
Over the past few months, I've steadily realized my bisexuality at the age of 25. Gay! Um, sorry. Bye! Uh, Edmund, pick a, pick a private. I can't. I like them all. Um, that's you, bro. Uh, I've steadily realized my bisexuality at the age of 25, so I've made sure to chat about my thoughts and feelings regarding this development with my girlfriend, Emma. Ooh, yeah, difficult who I have very happily lived with for two years. After much frank discussion, we agreed that I could begin searching for men to occasionally hook up with this coming Monday onwards, with the other relationship elements remaining the same. However, just before this could happen, we visited one of our old friends, Sarah, who was previously hooked up with Emma before we became a couple. Oh, a couple of bi warriors in the, in the relationship here. Um, the night kicks on, but I go to sleep early. Emma tells me the first thing next morning that she's hooked up with Sarah up to and including third base. What the fuck is third base? Oral. Oral. She ate pussy. Or she got her pussy eaten. Oh, Edmund. Uh, but now regrets it and wants to move past it if we can. Now, while the relationship was already about to become open, this still seems like a problematic matter. I already know most of your views regarding open relationships. However, I feel this may have... Uh, have something slightly different to it, given my realization of my emerging and inexperienced bisexuality. I tried to include only the most relevant parts of this saga, so any sensible advice is greatly appreciated. Love your work, Edmund. Uh, yeah, look, so my, my thoughts on open relationships is that they don't work and they can't work, uh, and uh, I don't see them working long term uh, just because... I just, I just don't, I don't know. I don't think that they're, I don't think, I think it like degrades the relationship just, just enough for both the people to be one foot in, one foot out, I suppose. But that was mostly like with, with uh, straight relationships, or I suppose with gay relationships also. <clears throat> Whereas if, if you, you're just working out like, oh fuck, I like dudes also and you want to explore that, but you still like your girlfriend. I suppose that is a tough one. Um, I do, look, it doesn't, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's, uh, it, I guess from the context of this, you haven't really said it here, but I guess an open relationship means that she is also free to pursue other people of the same sex is what it sounds like. You didn't say that. I'm assuming that. Uh, but to me, it's a little bit suspicious of you to have a conversation and a frank discussion and then for you to go, yeah, from this day and then the first time, the, fir the first thing you do after that conversation as a couple is go and hang out with the chick she's hooked up with before and then as soon as you leave them alone, they start hooking up. That to me means she's been looking at doing that for ages and maybe that is a violation of trust, a breach of your trust. It definitely is not cool that she's done that without talking about it because I think, you know, I mean, I've never been in one and I have no desire to be in one, but I imagine it like communication is like obscenely important because, uh, if you're just in an open relationship and you're not communicating what you're doing and who you're seeing, you might as well just be like two single people who kind of live together. If you're just going around fucking other people and not, you know, going, Oh, is it okay if I see this person on this day? Because I want to hang out with you. Like if you're just hanging around fucking everyone that you can, what's the point of being together? I suppose. So I think that, You've done the right thing and gone, oh, I'm thinking this. What do you think? Can we do this from this point? Let's go. And then she's just gone and like the first chance she's, the first time she's ever been alone with anyone else, she's like, she goes for it and then she regrets it. And then, I don't know, this, this to me is why I don't think open relationships work because I'm not sure if they can be done properly because it's such a confusing mix of feelings where obviously you like this chick but you want to explore but maybe you don't want her to explore and maybe she doesn't want to evidently after she's fucking done it and then gone oh this is bad I don't want to do this again uh, but then you still want to go out maybe she'll feel even worse when you go out and do your thing I, look, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but to be honest, 
I feel like if I if I if I add, like out of not out of nowhere, but if I suddenly realize like oh fuck, I actually like dudes. I feel like I would to to explore that properly. I would want to be single. Uh, I feel like you know. Because you got to think about your girl. Like, she's, I assume, I'm assuming a lot. I assume that she started dating you with, uh, under the, you know, the, the agreement or the, or the context of, oh, I've got a straight boyfriend, uh, right? Not that there's, there's nothing wrong with being gay or being bisexual, but, you know, it's something that you would factor in when you choose your partner is like, oh, I've, I want someone who's only going to like me. And then out of nowhere, you're like, oh, fuck, I actually like dudes. And she's like, oh, shit, now I have a bi boyfriend who wants to fuck other dudes. Like, that's come out of nowhere. If at the start of the relationship, you, you're you like, hey, my name's Edmund. I like uh, pussy and I like dick and I don't want to choose. And I want to begin an open relationship with you. And then at the very start of your dating uh, someone else, everyone knows that and everyone's cool with it and then they build it together. I think that might be possible. But when you go from monogamous relationship with a guy who only likes girls and has chosen you and then all of a sudden he goes, I like something that you cannot even begin to provide and I want to go and explore it. And that's a tough ask for your partner uh, and it's also almost impossible for her if she really likes you to say no. Because you're going, oh man, I've just discovered this about myself. I really like you, but I have to explore this because it's confusing and weird and, and, and awesome and I have to go and pursue it. If, if she goes, eh, no, you're not allowed to like men. Sorry, you know, I feel like she probably wouldn't do that if she likes you. So it's a weird thing where where you need to explore and she doesn't want to step on your on your feelings or sexuality and but but then she's not okay with her going outside of the relationship and obviously you don't seem okay with her doing it or maybe you are but only if she asks and communicates beforehand. I don't know. To me it sounds like you've done a lot of discussion and talking about what you can do and you've done like no discussion and talking about what she can do and if she's even okay with it and if you're okay with her going out and doing what she wants to do. To me, it seems like you haven't communicated properly but also you've communicated heaps. Maybe this isn't possible for the two of you because your relationship started like this and now it's this completely other beast basically. Um, I hope that was helpful. I'm not really sure. T to, me, to be honest, bro, I, you're, you're so young. You've only been with this girl for a couple of years. It's, it's immediately gotten, gotten insanely messy. Can you even come back from her technically cheating on you, but not really, but yeah, she did, but no, she didn't. It was just a day early. You know what I mean? Like, it, can you reconcile with that? Can she... You know, you haven't done anything. If this is her first step out and you're fucking emailing some cunt on a podcast, what's going to happen when you go and make your step out and, and then you, she goes, oh, what was it like? And you're like, dude, it was fucking awesome. He had a dick. And she's like, oh, I can't do that. I feel inadequate. You know? I don't know. That's that's kind of what I... that This is why I just don't think open relationships work or or potentially the only way they work is if that's what they are at the, the genesis, the beginning of the relationship because everyone's on the same page and everyone's like that. Because it seems like a lot of open relationships is one person going, I have to explore. And the other person going, either I do this and I try this or I lose them. I don't want to lose them. And then they let the other person explore and then they go, oh, this sucks. And then it blows up. That to me is what it is. I feel like maybe it would only work if two people at the same time at the start of a relationship before they're dating know for certain I can't be with one person. I've got to be with heaps. And then they both choose each other as their main partner and then they do whatever they want. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I have no experience with that stuff. I'm a very monogamous boy. So good luck, I guess. Give me an update. I'd love to know 
Sorry, a bit of a recording error there. That's where I'm going to leave it for, for this week. Uh, if you want more podcasts, uh, jump on the Patreon. There is uh, the Sunday supplement up right now. A bit of extra Sundays for you. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm going to be going in, in depth in, in what's happening with me. And i got a few other funny stories to tell. Uh, so if you want more more Speared Sundays and there's a giant backlog ne- uh, of stuff there now and you want to join the Discord and everything like that, you want early access to all my content, all that good stuff, uh, support me on Patreon, Lou Spears. Uh, just Google Lewis Spears. Patreon, you'll find it. Uh, any of the tiers, you get access to all the bonus content and early access and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it supports what I do. Uh, and it, uh, you know, it pays for it pays for my ability to uh, yell about paramedics. I guess if you want to fund that, you know, uh, you can. So thank you very much. I'll talk to you guys next Sunday, or I'll talk to you right now on Patreon. But until then, I hope you have a shit one. Goodbye. <laughs>